Hello. 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 Okay, this is a test, by the way, because I haven't streamed from my new place yet, and I had like spent like an hour troubleshooting my internet you know, last night to get it to work, Goodness and we haven't and dropped any test. frames yet, so we're good so far. Smile. Hey guys. Oh, right. For now. Welcome to Dungeon Discourse, the show about the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a show that we kind of half-assed last campaign every once in a while, but this time fully intend to do on a weekly basis, talk about the previous session and, and anything else really campaign two related. Uh, I figured today we'd start with uh, having Ethan and Soko on to talk about uh, their session zero, their character creation, what went into it, and also discuss, you know, session one, things that happened and all that stuff. Uh, so Ooh. welcome. Um, Hello. Good, good to see you, Ethan, Hi, Soko. Dad. Thanks for being here. Appreciate y'all. I mean, it's nice before I have to go to work and... Dude, wait, 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 wait. Can we just quickly... Can you... Wait, for you... Could you, like, rotate your chair up to the right a little bit so I can say hi to Minty? By the way. Oh. Hey, Minty! What a gamer, dude. Look at him sitting there. Is, that, mm. is he sitting on oh, the printer? printer. Nice. Uh, As they got, is it an RGB? don't actually use it. He's, like, scan is he, like scanning his ass to, like, print, like, <laughs> pictures of his ass? Uh, dude, it wouldn't surprise you to, like, dick pics <laughs> just stacks them over, you know? Every time you introduce <laughs> to someone nice. in Valorant and you just send someone a flat screen <laughs> dude, and okay. cock and uh, Actually, we're not going to talk about this. This has nothing to do with d, d but I fucking randomly start watching a Valorant streamer. And I was like, dude, she sounds kind of familiar. And she, like, was playing Jet. And I was like, oh, wait, her, her voice sounds a lot like Jet. And it's the fucking voice actress for Jet. And I was like, that's fucking crazy. That was weird. Yeah, yeah, She She and a couple of the other voice actors were actually playing Squaw. Or, like, playing some games <laughs> the other night. Like, two weeks yeah. back, maybe? Like, I mean, we she's, got, like, like, just, like, a them. fucking, just a normal-ass gamer. It was fucking weird. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a couple of things. Uh, first of all, obviously, the Sunday session two will uh, will happen. I'm very looking forward to it. I did some work for it today, made some maps and all this stuff for the potential encounters that may or may not happen. Uh, and obviously, it's be. It was, there's going to be, you know, we're, it's it's festival time, so there's going to be a lot of... I have a document, or like a, I found a, a, a thing that has like over 30, fa you know, like fair games, but like made totally. into D&D. &D. So I picked you're, I had, you're not giving I, us all those, right? No, no, I just like I like cherry picked like a handful to like spread say, You know we're gonna try them all, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, <sighs> so that's the Sunday. Obviously, Bella's killing it with a YouTube grind. Uh, session one went up on YouTube yesterday or like last night. Baldur's Gate will be up on YouTube tomorrow because it's Thursday today. Tomorrow's Friday. Yes, this will be up on YouTube on Saturday. Belle is awesome. So, like, round, round of applause for Belle for doing so much fucking work. She's killing it. Um, but yes, obviously, be... guys, join the subreddit and all that good stuff if you want to submit your questions. I don't think anyone submitted any questions this week, but hopefully, as uh, that's wait. why we also have chat smile. Oh, Reddit is down. Smile. So uh, even, oh, if I, if, even if I read questions on Reddit, <laughs> then we couldn't check it anyway because Reddit's down. So I'll get fucked. <laughs> Reddit's oh, fine. Too bad get it's not fucked. just Canadian Reddit. Oh, honestly. I tried to open Reddit and it's just like, ow. And there's like this little cringe fucking image. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, it works for me? <laughs> I'm logged on the wrong account though. Is this like Dungeon. Canadian Discord? Can you open up Reddit? Like Dungeon Select Reddit? Like... Yeah, I'm going to uh, Yes, I can. Welcome to Dungeon Select, Dungeon Select Twitch channel has been interesting. created. Interesting, I cannot. Very interesting. Oh, well, fuck it, I guess. Campaign two. Is there a specific thread for it? No, not yet, but uh, I just, you know, I just wanted to, I was talking about the Reddit, so I wanted to open the Reddit, and there was no Reddit for me, so, you know. I also, uh, oh, MMS, I woke up at like 2pm today, and I'm just now having dinner. I made some chicken nuggies in the air fryer, nuggies. so I'll be snacking on, snacking on those while, while doing this. It's gonna ask and us a question, and just be like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, obviously you guys were the first ones to do the session zero out of uh, out of all three. Um, Best session let's, zero. Let's honestly. let's start with your characters, though. You both, you know, obviously everyone has worked on their characters uh, for a while. I know, especially fucking dude, especially you, Ethan. You've been you've been fucking. Yeah, he's been changing character. a lot of shit around. True, dude. that as well. Yeah. Uh, just just let's let's start with you. Like, walk us through the process of you creating a new character for Campaign 2. Like, basically having to step in, like, Aberrant's, like, 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 shoes to, like, to, like, follow up, essentially. Oh, okay. Um, so, originally, I started writing this character uh, during Campaign 1. When Abran was dealing with things from his past and snuck away from the group. 
and we had we had a moment where we had like a while between sessions i was like okay i might actually die next session i need to make some sort of backup character it was like you know the party's in a, a bit of a more sensible place now with trim uh a couple of the characters seem to have matured quite a lot i don't want to play the party dad anymore i want to go off the deep end the other way mm -hmm. um so i started building a character with that sort of intention um and then at the time i'd also been messing around with a lot of homebrew stuff um i've been looking through a lot of homebrew classes a lot of homebrew one shots and that sort of thing and uh, i spent a time a lot of time looking at the pugilist class which is a free resource from sterling vermin and it's a really cool class and i uh, should no. definitely check it out <laughs> i i considered it for a while and then dutch was like okay guys we're gonna go with all like cool things and i was like okay yeah, for the sake I of can... ease and D&D Beyond, let's just take, take stuff that's on D&D Beyond. Smile. And I was like, okay, I can make that work. So first I was like, could do a homebrew barbarian subclass and put that on d and Beyond. And then I was like, mm, I want to do something... In terms of mechanics, I want to do something weird. I want to do something that's really out there, that's not like anything I've played before, that people haven't seen before. And I was like... I can make this work. I have a melee combatant that's an angie boy. Why not multi-class monk barbarian? Raging alcoholic, literally. Literally a raging alcoholic. <laughs> so I had a look into it, um, and it took. I had to really sit down with the classes because I had to work out if I could make it work, if it would work well together, which I was going to main in, and you know the large majority of decisions I've made yeah, for this so, class. Yeah, because. Just for for you know the people watching, you're level two now, but you've already multiclassed. You were you're level yes. one barbarian, level one monk, which is a very yes. interesting choice. I I got very lucky that I uh, so got gross. really good <laughs> rolls uh, for my starting stats, and because I know that I'm playing a suboptimal build for the sense of RP, uh, I took the high stats I rolled, which meant that I met my multiclass requirements. So. I've started off with, well, first of all, I'm doing very far against normal barbarian and not optimizing that because I'm uh, using hand axes uh, and dual which wielding. Is which is definitely, I wanted to comment on that. I'm going to be interjecting a lot while you guys are that's talking. because I, I mean, that's the whole point. You're yeah, right. So, <laughs> I feel like hand axes are definitely like a, a, a suboptimal weapon damage wise. It's definitely not the weapon, the weapon you would go for if your goal is I want to min max my fucking damage. No, it's like picking a but, spear. But like RP wise, dude, it's so sick. Just hearing you say like, you know, like just the way you flavor your hand axes and shit is fucking cool as shit. The thing about hand axes is that unfortunately the majority of the time there are better weapons you can take. If you want to mm. do something, short swords, rapier, you know, there are better options. It's the same as like a dagger. Mm -hmm. Where the majority of the time a dagger's a 1d4, a hand axe is a 1d6. They're not the most optimal choice, but they're fun. Um, so I remember the hand axes with the knowledge that it doesn't really matter because I'm getting quite a heavy damage boost with rage. Mm -hmm. And eventually, because I'm keeping my main class as monk, I'm going to get to a point where my hand axes are non essential anyway. Oh. So. I was going to say, that comes at like what, level 3 or 4 as a monk? Or um, D6? You think it was up to D6? Might be level five as a monk. Yeah, it might be. Um, but either awesome. way, I looked at that and the only so so because it's such a weird multi class, I've had to essentially plan out my leveling to a certain extent because mm -hmm. I had to make sure that it'll work as we level. Um, and there are a few spots here and there where I can mess with things based on what I think the character's going through and what I think the party needs. Um, I did a lot of comparison against a standard monk, which is it's really nice having Laura playing a monk, because there are lots of times that I can look at what her character's doing and be like, okay, my character is 80% monk at the end of this. Mm -hmm. So what's my character doing differently? How can I flavor that differently? How can I... I love just the dif sheer difference in flavor between the two monks. We, we have Laura's monk, who's like super dexterous and very elegant and does like flips and shit and you know like very classic when you think of monk that's what you think about yeah and then you have yeah. you who is like the polar opposite like you are 
strength based uh, to yeah. flavor your shits instead of being like I'm gonna go for these like fucking throat punches. You just fucking rip a man's guts out. And yeah. dude, it he's is a, so he's a barroom baller. Yeah, like yeah. it's a, it's so sick. I fucking yeah. love it. It's mechanically monk but spiritually barbarian. Yeah. Is and the way that I, I love that it. that works and how the contrast is between our two monks. It's I think because when it, when like look, for instance last campaign, we had two barbarians, and sure they did things differently, but overall they were very similar in their approach to things. And so I was like, oh, we're gonna have two monks. We're gonna kind of have that same thing again where we have two of the same classes, so things are gonna be very like similar. And it's not at all, and I love that. I love that we have two of the same classes, but. They're both played so insanely different. It's I love that. We should just all play monk. I really <laughs> like having Laura playing a monk because there are certain things that my ca monk can't do where her character is going to fill that role really well. And then on top of that, it's really I feel like having another monk in the group really makes the difference in the character I'm making obvious. Mm -hmm. Like it, it would be very easy to just think of it as a barbarian monk. Mm -hmm. And just, oh, it's a monk that's angry. But when you have another monk in the group, you can see that there's a lot of difference in yeah. like, the way they approach situations. Because um, mechanically, I'm not that different from not Laura's not character. There's subclass differences. There's the fact that I get rage bonus. I'm going to be a couple of levels behind on uh, martial arts die. Uh, the only other real difference is that I have a shit ton of health and... I have a very low DC for any of my monk abilities. So I've basically just thrown Stunning Strike out the window. Partially because we already have a monk. Two monks using Stunning Strikes as a DM. Yeah, I would stun lock rather... Me, daddy. I, would, I, would, I, would, I think Dush thanks your sacrifice, to absolutely. be honest. I, I, would, I would rather chew on glass. Thanks um, for not making my life living hell. But on top of that, like... It makes sense to me that my character wouldn't go for that sort of thing you mm -hmm. know punching someone in a specific cluster of nerves what's the point you could just beat the shit out of them until they stop moving mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I mean, just i just think it's really fun and i'm very hang happy to build it yeah it's it's fucking cool as shit dude um because i know like the, one of the things that i wanted to bring up with your character creation is that there was this thing because both the classes have unarmed defense yes but both classes unarmed defense works differently because barbarian gives you bonus it's it's 10, 10 plus dex plus con dex plus con when monk is is 10 plus dex right uh, plus wisdom. wisdom plus wisdom yes and we were like really constantly bickering and thinking about like well, how would this work blah blah, blah because uh, and then we, we finally made a decision and then ethan makes his fucking sheet in dd beyond and dd beyond forces you down one path with regarding that anyway it's like all oh, Yes. Never mind. So, <laughs> the way that this works, um, according to the official multiclassing rules, if you have multiple armor calculations, you choose whichever one you want, mm -hmm. but you cannot gain the feature unarmored defense more than once. Yeah. So, if I was a total monk, I could use my total AC or my monk AC. But if you multiclass monk barbarian, you can't have two versions of an unarmored defense. Mm -hmm. So... Whichever one you get first, that's it, according to official rules. So I was like, okay, so I need to start off as whichever one I'm going to work with and then work around that, and that will change my session zero a little, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. And that's why I multiclassed essentially straight away, because I wanted to start as more of a monk, and I wanted to lean into sort of monk abilities a bit more early sessions. But for session zero, I needed to be a barbarian to make things work, and I did all of that, and I put it all in d, &D Beyond, and... Because D&D Beyond has no way of telling, essentially, which class you added first, mm -hmm. it just chooses whichever one's higher for you. And I was like, huh, maybe I should report that. So I went into the forums, I looked at the bug reports, and I found it. And someone did submit a bug report on it, and D&D Beyond did respond and say that they would add it to their list of things to do. In 2017. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a few years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was about four <laughs> years ago, which shows you how much of a niche class it is. It's like, that, yeah, and that's the thing. It's such a niche fucking combination where I th I think you could go play D&D with different players every week, and never making a new character every week for years before encountering this specific issue. Yeah, it's 
Like, I don't think I ever would have multiclassed Monk it's or no other. Together. It's no other two classes have this issue. Because no other two classes have overlapping AC calculations. Yeah, exactly. So, but eh, I mean, the other day, it works. Fuck it, right? So uh, we move, Fuck we move it, on. it works. It's um, cool as shit, and I'm very happy. One cool with thing it. that I do want to bring up, but we're not going to go like in depth in your backstories and shit, because that would spoil other players, but also, you know, like. Wait, we're not just posting those? <laughs> that would also spoil uh, people that want to watch the campaign and, expl and find shit out as things happen. Hey, let's go but to there's like, one thing that quick. I want to bring up regarding Brooks's background in particular, and that is his recipes for the various different <laughs> drinks. For those that don't know, and we'll have Ethan talk about it for a bit, but. My man sent me a fucking document, you know, his backstory, his background, where he's from, and then just a fucking, like, list. Because he has a background in, in alcohol, you know, like, like, taverns and shit. And he gave me a list of, like, different ales, different brews, cocktails, with recipes and everything, and names, and it's so cool. And I, wanna, I want you to kind of, like, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, this is when I was, like, mid, like, D&D &D food hype. And at the time, I started uh, the D&D cookbook, which I'm still sort of working on in the background. It's simmering away. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I just don't... Like, my character worked as a bartender for years. My character has an intimate relationship with alcohol on both sides of the bar. I don't just want to walk up and be like, I would like an ale. No. Because it's, it's not how it would work in real... You don't go to a pub and like, I'll have a beer. You just don't. Yeah, you say the brand, typically. Yeah, over here. You, you know the brand. You don't just say, I'll have a drink. You know which drink you want to order. You know what's in or it. like, I'll have whatever you have on tap kind of thing. You know, yeah. Like that, that sort of thing. Yeah. So it was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to take a bunch of drinks and I'm going to look at them and I'm going to think, okay, how can I make that fit into a fantasy world? Uh, so I, I started off with a list. I was like, okay, so how's mead made? How's cider made? How's wine made? What are the basic ingredients in those? Mm -hmm. So that, which all leads into, without spoiling too much, um, one of the monk subclasses I'm looking at is Drunken Master. Oh, which please. Let's let you brew. You get proficiency with brewer supplies. You can make your own alcohol. And I was like, I don't just Did want you, like, to like arouse like a downtime thing too to keep yourself that drunk was, all the time. Uh, that would be from the pugilist subclass oh okay see i mixed things um but yes uh drunken master one of the things with it is that you get brewer supplies you can make your own alcohol mm -hmm. so i'm not just gonna turn around to dutch and be like i would like to make alcohol a short rest great okay you made alcohol i'm gonna be like all right i want to go look out see what sort of grains or fruits i can find and he'll be like okay you find these things i'll be like right okay that's you know i found some weird fruit that's close enough i'll use that and i'll start fermenting it and i'll make it into a cider mm. or you know you found y you've got some half drunk bottles of wine okay well i'm gonna make those into a port or i'm gonna spice them or you know i'm gonna i'm gonna find some anises and flowers and make some absinthe so i was like okay i'm gonna start with a list of those and how i would make those and then once I've got those alcohols, Brooks is the sort of person, like, you walk into a tavern with him, he's going to go order drinks for everyone. Mm -hmm. He might not pay for them, but he's going to go order drinks for everyone. <laughs> and this is... I, I've discussed this with a few people, where I have in mind drinks for each of the characters that I want to order on our I mean, yeah, because I have your festivities. thing open now, right? And I'm looking at... Yeah. Especially the cocktails, dude. Like... Yeah. You know, you have your classics, you know, you have your fucking fire water, you have your fucking whiskeys, your your brandy, your gins, but then the cocktails come up and it's like Wish in a well. Tall mug of clear gin, served half full. Traditionally the drinker would place a, a tip in the cup before drinking, which is left for the staff. Yeah. Like shit yeah. like that. And it's so cool. It's so fucking cool and creative. I fucking love that shit. The idea being that you have a large glass, which is your well. Mm -hmm. And you put your tip in, but you put your tip in beforehand. Um, and there's there's a history and like lore to yeah, all of these like, that you know, I made up in my head. In the fucking wishing well, right? That's yeah. the premise. Yeah, yeah. I fucking love that. The premise is that the premise is also um, uh, a lot of places. It, so in my mind, I have like ideas about all of these, and the idea is that you would put like you if it was a, a painted coin like it was a wooden coin with paint on it if you left it in the drink while you were drinking it the paint would flake off so you wouldn't tip someone with a fake coin because you're going to end up drinking paint flakes and it's going to be horrible mm -hmm. so they all the staff would see that it's a proper coin 
before you leave. Do any of the cocktails use Feywild chicken? Uh, no. Chicken? They do not use Feywild chicken. I, I messaged quite a few people from, like, the community. I was like, okay, what's your favorite cocktail or drink? And then I was like, okay, how can I D&D fantasyify that? So there's dude, quite a few that... good, dude. Good night, bitch. <laughs> Vodka, rum, gin, lemon, lime, blue blood. Serve with a lemon slice and a cherry. Sweet, easy drink. Hits you like a ton of bricks. Named for named for its ability to put you to fuck to sleep. Yes. Wait, what is it actually called as a cocktail? Because I swear so, I've had it. Uh, it reminds me a lot of uh, a fucking Long Island iced tea, but with vodka instead of. Um, so it is. What's it called? Well, blue blood saying, it's definitely is definitely a lot heavier than a Long Island iced tea, though. Blue blood is essentially the fantasy equivalent that I made of blue curacao. So blue uh, curacao. Mm -hmm. uh, half of these I can't remember because I made them a long, long time ago. Blue curacao, gin, vodka, rum. Uh, so it would be a, a blue Long Island iced tea. Or an adios motherfucker is another name for it. Mm -hmm. So oh. that then becomes fantasy And I was like, adios motherfucker. Eh, good night, bitch. It's got <laughs> a shit ton of alcohol in it. It's really sweet. It's probably not going to taste very strong because of the amount of uh, ci uh, citrus you've got in it. And you're gonna drink like two or three of them, and be like, "Yeah, I'm fine." And then you, 20 minutes later, you're drooling yeah. on a bar top somewhere. And I, but I, what I love about this is that you have given me a lot of like, different drinks. So when I, when you order that drink, I know exactly how to flavor it myself and be like, "Okay, yeah," you know, and that, that'll make like the like the tavern side of the role play a lot more interesting, yeah. I guess. Uh, so a lot of them list like the ingredients in it or where it comes from. Um. One of my personal favorites is a hogshead. A hogshead is a specific brand of cider, but it's like a cooking cider. If you someone see someone drinking a hogshead, you know they're either homeless or an alcoholic. <laughs> in the same way that like, if you go in the kitchen and your mom's swigging on the cooking wine, you're going to think there's a problem. Yeah, like, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's, uh, you know what, dude? In hindsight, you can, yeah, you got a point. Um, Wait, there's <laughs> cooking wine and there's regular wine? Yes. Yeah. You, just you also have like wine specific cook. like cooking rum, which is like eighty percent alcohol or some shit. Yeah. Like you don't want to just be sipping that. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Um. Learning okay. Things. So that is uh. Unless you have anything else you want to add to your like process and you're creating your character and some of his like unique um things. If not, spoil um, everything. Like the last eight months working on his voice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, the accent is fucking great, though. I feel it's like everyone's great. been like struggling on that. Oh, I want to become famous, please. I, oh, do I you do. know what? I was really annoyed because I had this idea a long, long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, the accent makes sense. I was like, I've never seen a tiefling with an Irish accent before. And then fucking Critical Role came out of nowhere. <laughs> and it's like, oh. Yeah, but he died, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, that's still spoilers for some. It's, it's, Dude, like it's been like one. four years since those tweets went viral. I don't give a fuck, honestly. <laughs> um, Dude, Bell, you cannot yell spoilers because you spoiled fucking Avengers on stream. Yeah, you okay? dumb you bitch. Said... <laughs> you spoiled it like the week after it came out. Oh, oh my god. god. Uh, All right. But no, like, I, I accent is fun. Smile. No, you won't ever live it down. So, um, Soko, yeah, Ethan's been talking for long enough. Please take over. Let's uh, <sighs> let's talk about the character creation that brought us Jax. All right, so I've had Jax in the pipeline since I really got looking into Artificer in general. Since like, so basically, since Tasha's came out, mm -hmm. um, because I always liked Artificers, but when was it? Oh, what was the book? Acquisition Incorporated came out with their Artificer. Mm -hmm. It was like only like the Alchemist. You didn't really have much with it. And the class itself just felt really lackluster and didn't really it, it didn't really feel fun to play. It's kind of, it's kind of like the uh, original Ranger mm -hmm. where you're just like, yeah, I love the concept. Everything is cool, but it just doesn't quite play well. Um, So once I saw Tasha's, I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. And I I genuinely enjoy playing high intelligence characters. I, I feel like Tasha more... did a lot of good for a lot of classes, really. Oh, yeah, Tasha's the fucking, fucking warlock is super cool. The fucking ranger is super cool. 
I mean, we have three Tasha's classes in our campaign. I'm pretty sure. Do we really? Yeah, we have Duke, we have you, and we have uh, Bell. Right? Yeah. Oh, so shit. Like, yeah, yeah. So like half the camp, half the cast is playing Tasha's iterations of no, classes. No, wait. Isn't Koiba also Tasha's? Twilight Domain? Uh, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, he Tasha's is. Tasha's <laughs> pretty good, boys. <laughs> they made our campaign, boys. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. Four. So and like, I nearly... 66.6% like <laughs> of the campaign is, is Tasha's classes. I nearly chose a Tasha's subclass for my monk. So like, overall, I mean, Tasha's just Tasha's so good, pretty good, dude. Yeah, it's a really... One of it, the better books they've brought out in the recent It's not years. as good as Xanthar's, and, and I think that's just because it doesn't come out with enough spells that were brand new. But, you know, that's... <laughs> I get it. Yeah, but what they lack um, in spells, anyways, they, they made up in other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, there was a while where I was debating my uh, subclass, which I still haven't... I'm pretty sure I decided I'm archetype at this point. Like, I'm kind of, you know, kind of yeah, already there. time. But, um... I mean, there, you have the Battlesmith. There's this Eldritch Cannon one. I don't remember what it's called. Artillerist. Or, yeah? Yeah. Um, And then, like, the Armor. Alchemist I still don't really care for, so I won't talk about it too much. But, um, so I, I was debating between those for a while. I think I've come up with one that I really enjoy and a play style that's going to work with the party well, which is kind of another thing I was looking at. Um, but yeah, so Jax has been in the pipeline for almost a year now, I think, because Tosh is released around, right around this time. Um, I didn't decide on a race easily. That was, that was a little tougher because obviously with Tosh's, you know, all your races, you can make stats whatever they are so you're really just looking at okay what do i want my character to look like and be like but also you know what, what extra things do i am i getting out of the race with this mm -hmm. so i debated on being a minotaur <laughs> for a long time i remember you talking about that yeah because the juxtaposition of having just this fucking big ass minotaur be like super intelligent and like fiddling with his hands more and not being a really strong boy because big strong go hand to make tiny device yeah, you know. <laughs> um, Worst part being that I like also that. debated. Plus, dude, Minotaur. I can't believe our whole. I think almost our whole party is over six foot for the most part. We have like two characters that aren't right. Sorry? No. We only have two characters that aren't over six foot. This. I'm pretty sure it's just me and you. No, because Laura's six two. What well, Laura's cat? Uh, D Dagan. She's six two. Um. Yeah, think. Laura's pretty tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laura's character. Uh, I think Koyo's character is like 5'11. So he's close enough. No idea. You know, we'll just, we'll just count him. Pretty sure, pretty sure but, uh, fucking Bell's character is the shortest, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. 5'1, dude. Oh, I was right. I actually remember Koyo's height. Little Jesus. tiny blue lady. But, um. Yeah, so the, like, I. Dalkin are fucking tall, dude. Did not realize when I first started looking at him. Um, I also debated it on a Simic hybrid because they can like change their append there they grow appendages as they level up, which is kind of sick. Um, <laughs> but I think I chose I chose Dalkin just because it kind of made sense with our Tiff Circus. They like they have this uh, uh, feature called uh, Tireless Precision, which gives them like extra bonuses on um, their tinkering checks. But it also spoke to me because the Dalkin. They don't believe in absolute perfection. They believe that there's always something to be improved upon with every new iteration, which I think yeah. screams artificer. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Fredalkin is I knew of them, but never really bothered looking into them. Mm -hmm. And you playing Fredalkin kind of forced me to. And they're an interesting, like, interesting group of people. They got a lot of, like, very unique kind of... They're kind of mean. They're, they remind me a lot of... Um... Fuck. Oh, dude, ah, this is gonna bother me, but they remind me of, like, something in, like, recent pop culture. And now I cannot put my fucking thumb on it, and I uh, will probably, it'll probably jump into my head, like, later on, but... Yeah. It, they remind me of something that I, in, something in recent pop culture to kind of have that same mindset of... Nothing is ever done. Anything can always be improved. That whole, like, idea, yeah. Yeah, and they're kind of cold and emotionless, sort of. Or they don't have, they don't have a good time showing their emotions a lot of the time. Which is literally you I in real life, like so there you go. Fair, <laughs> honestly, yeah. Uh, just add a line of drinking to hide emotions, and I mean, we're there. Um, but yeah, so like, I, I ended up choosing Vidalkin, and I'm excited to explore some things with that as we go throughout the campaign. Um, 
but I think the biggest struggle I had was just trying to pick which stats and like the dude I I struggled on the age of my Vidalgan for so long because <laughs> mm -hmm. they're another I have a habit of just ending up on races that live a long time. Yeah. Um, I mean, last Vidalgan campaign like you exclusively played years. elves though. My half elf, I guess, dies at a regular time, right? Do they? Yeah, I think so. I don't okay, think I think they'll live like three hundred or something like that. Oh god, that comes too crazy. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's fair. No, it's, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want to do like a, you know, fucking another race that's three hundred years old and they still look the same. Um. But I couldn't decide whether I wanted to be like young and just looking to explore the world or whether he's older. And I was like. You know, I need a voice for this campaign. And I do a decent old man voice, I think. I don't really care what anyone else says. <laughs> um, so I was like, yeah, dude, playing an old man would be great. And then I started thinking, I was like, okay, an older tiffster guy. How does he not really get into that till later in life? And then, you know, came up with the backstory and everything. And then I decided to dump stat decks. Hi. And, you know... I've never really played a low dex character. So, I've you know, I've played like some like, you know, 12 dex characters, but that's like, you know, you still got a plus one or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're still chilling. I never realized how much dex really fucks you over if you don't have a good dex. Yes, sir. <laughs> because I have a negative initiative. My armor class, which should be 14 or above, is a 12 because of my dex. Um... You know, stealthing, which because of my armor, I'm already at a disadvantage at because I wear a scale mail. I mm -hmm. have a minus two to it and disadvantage. Yeah. So I think the I think my average roll is going to come out to like a seven or eight. <laughs> um, There's something else that I noticed in the, the last session that I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe that. Your crossbow. Me. Oh, yeah. Crossbow. I have a plus zero to hit with it. <laughs> <laughs> um so i'm just kind of relying on the dice to be nice to me and they were and not last session let me tell you no I, I, had a, <laughs> I had a negative one initiative right yeah you had a negative one initiative that one uh, one of the fights yeah 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 <gasps> Yeah, like what I, your voice reminded me a lot of your fucking arakakra from our off-stream campaign oh yeah <laughs> but, but, but you, you got to play Dude, like one of your sessions and then that. but um <laughs> What yeah, I like about, about Jax is, like, obviously, we're not going to go talk about his backstory, but, like, obviously, I know his backstory, mm -hmm. right? And at first, you're like, oh, he's an old, you know, you think, like, oh, old man, you know, whatever, he won't, you know, is, you, you don't expect an old man with, like, an old man mentality and the whole thing of, like, gods aren't real, science is everything, to then just go binge drinking with someone like 20% his age, or if not less, <laughs> and like try to like hustle people out of money and shit like that. And you, do, you don't expect it, but I don't mind it either. You know what I mean? I fucking yeah, love yeah, that yeah, there's yeah. this like old ass dude with this young fucking tiefling just going around like hustling people for gold and just doing <laughs> a binge drinking. And it's, oh, dude, it's so fucking funny. It's so good. So I, I didn't actually plan on that being his character. But then me and Ethan started talking. He's like, oh, yeah, I chose a charlatan background. And I'm like, I got some scams on my seat. I was like, oh, fuck. Our tipsters have the best scam. Because you, at level one, you can make these little trinkets. And you can make up to four of them. And they don't break until you either break it or unless it breaks. Or I think you have to like, or if you make a new one. The okay, first you one make a you fifth made, one, breaks. so the first one you made will break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like. This is perfect because if I sell these trinkets for like a silver piece, right? And then I let it last like a day, do it again with another four. Like I'm like a four silver a day just on that alone. Mm -hmm. And to them, you know, these trinkets aren't huge. So it's like, oh, small trinket, broke easy. You no, know, a little yo yo or whatever the fuck, you know, like it's nothing like super insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's not like, like you're oh, selling people light the fucking cure to some like disease that then turns out to be a sham. It's just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here's it's not toy. like revenge worthy things that yeah, I'm Yeah, here's like here's like a little yo yo kid enjoy one silver please mm -hmm. and then the next day it breaks and you're like, oh tough shit. Jokes yeah. on you guys, because so I am selling people the cure to a disease and what it's are they gonna alcohol. do? They're dead. It's called alcohol, smile. True. That honestly. is also true. <laughs> oh 
Uh, yeah, but um, I like the... What I've noticed from all Session Zeroes but it's, uh, is that each character that kind of got matched up with each other, there's similarities in their, like... Um, That's the weirdest thing. In their... Just their attitude, their overall... The overall person that they are, there's a lot of similarities. I noticed that in all of the um, Session Zeroes. Um... I love that we're just like the nonchalant, <laughs> don't really give a fuck group. Yeah, and it fits. It feels obviously like it feels we, right. What I when I wrote the session zeros, I was like, okay, I have my initial story arc for the campaign planned. I'm gonna need one duo that has dealt with the threats before to kind of be that like somewhat of a guide, or at least the the people that could tell the party like, oh. Yeah, we've seen this before. This and this is what they do to kind of, to kind of help them understand that this is not just like a one-off like thing. This is this could be like an actual threat because you've seen it before. Two attacks, two Yuanti attacks over the course of a week. That's more than just coincidence. Both no. tunnels dug to separate buildings or separate places in the city. Blah blah blah, and kind of get that going. And it ended up I ended up rolling, and I was like, okay, which duo is going to be that duo? And it ended up being you guys. And uh, <laughs> bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man. So your session zero was very similar to session one in a way where you woke up in a tavern, kind of did your day, started your day, and this this woman came out their house screaming, holding a baby, yelling that there are snake people in her basement, and you ended up like going in there, like what the fuck is this? What what's going on? You want tea? Found a ton, killed them, found a ton. We almost didn't go in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like <laughs> you want tea? Killed them, found a tunnel. Tunnel led to underground sacrificial room, blah, blah, blah. Very similar to, to session one. But I needed that to have, to, to basically at least ingrain in you two that that Yuan T thing isn't just like a one-off, that, that, that this could potentially be a problem and kind of have one duo of the six or of the, of the three duos kind of already kind of be aware of what could potentially be happening so they... I don't know, so that they can kind of, um, I don't know, take, take, um, not necessarily take the lead on that, but more so indicate that they it's can just a guide. Yeah, things, indicate yeah. to the rest of the group like, oh, okay, th th there's gonna be more of this stuff, or like these snake people, and uh, combining that with like you got, you know, obviously in your session zero you found like a note and, and that you brought up in session one and and all that stuff. Um, I that fucking notes we found two notes each of us found a note neither of us told the other one both yeah. of us went to separate any, places i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah so chat this is fun or people watching you know for the youtube or whatever but um it was funny because both of their characters found like a note or a piece of text or whatever the fuck that they couldn't read and instead of telling each other they like went to separate places to get it translated or something. Like, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, I went to like a bookshop and you ever. went to some shady. Yeah, you went like you went, to, you went to a bookshop uh, to to translate it. And Ethan uh, Brooks went to um, a character that is involved in the like criminal circuit that does shady shit in the city to have it fucking uh, translated. And it Wait. is My fucking note was the just best about thing the assassination, ever. Huh? Huh? <laughs> My note was literally just about the assassination, huh? Yeah, your notes yeah. was uh yeah, pretty much. <laughs> your notes kind of I I forget what exactly it said. I can like, but um, yeah. it was somewhat of a warning that yeah, and, you know. Wait, what did your nice, notes I say? Wait, everything. I don't remember actually because I didn't I didn't write it down. I actually meant to DM you about this. Session zero. Uh, I didn't so write calm. it down because it wasn't my character. Smile. I meant to write it down. I thought Session I did. Session zero. Brooks and Jax. Hold on, give me a sec. Um. Jackson. Jackson. Brooks and Jackson. Your notes, I'm pretty sure, was the one that said, infiltrate the city, dispose of who you must in disguise as humans, learn what you can about the defenses and report back. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. Was that yours? I yep. think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, fun. that was kind of a bit of like, yeah, they were preparing for this like attempted assassination and ended up doing it a week later. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice. we've just been running around the city where the snake people disguised as real people and he hasn't said shit to me. Dude, I'm just glad that bookshop keeper hasn't fucking talked about something. <laughs> I mean, you don't know. Has he? Has he not? Who knows? I mean, I, the guards aren't coming after me, so I'm assuming he hasn't. Yeah, I mean, I mean the guards are a little busy with the whole, like, uh, Imperial Emissary almost being assassinated, you know? That, that might take priority. No, yeah, um... I'm just scared. 
I'm scared to go back to that bookshop. Uh, Anyways. But then what I also wanted to say is that all the session zeros uh, like explore different parts of the city, which is really cool. Like your your session zero pretty much exclusively took place in the tavern dis or the, the trade district slash the like residential area. Get it east uh, side. Uh, which is which is very cool. And and the other session zeros took place in like you know like one session zero was mainly temple district and and guild district, and then there was one session zero that kind of took place. That, that, yeah, Dukes and Koibos was more of like a, their travel to the city, whereas the other session zeros were like they were they're in the city already, and their session zero was happening there. Um, purely because those two were the only characters that had to come from all the way across the continents, because they're both from the kingdoms. Um, so their naturally their trip to a grand was in Fairbus footing, and so not the foreigners. Uh, got it. You you all are. Yeah, I mean, we both we both <laughs> nah, are as well. If but... anything, no, but if anything, the Yuan Ti are the natives, and they're just pissed that you, you know what I mean. <laughs> like, they're just like, dude, you're building Man, a city on top doing, of bro? like on top of our fucking like temples and shit. Fuck you, like that's really Honestly. what it boils down to. You know what I mean? Um, we had the colonizers, but uh, I mean, oh, no. listen, not necessarily. Yeah, the vaccine's ready. You know, because because but... there is, I'll say, there are Yuan Ti tribes that work peacefully with the settlers and have found a way to coexist but there's Just this like there's this group like this specific group that are very anti you know uh empire slash kingdoms and yeah are taking action and that is kind of what i dropped all of you in the middle of it's like okay have fun that's your first story arc figure this out boys <laughs> you know i mean um, on top of that as well soccer <laughs> out here like oh they're the foreigners because they shipped here as if his character's not from an entirely different place. Oh, true. Just because you're born there doesn't mean you're a citizen there, Home okay? Is I have my citizenship. Is, and his, art, his heart is in the friendly giant tag. my passport says I'm from here, so, <laughs> bitch. But your I passport mean, is fake, One of so. my seven passports <laughs> says uh, that. <laughs> no, uh, um... Yeah, so no, uh, I, I don't know if I want to tell everyone where our characters are from yet. Do you? You don't have to if you don't want to. I came from the Sunken Kingdom. Yeah, totally. Yeah, dude. I breathe water. Yeah, totally. No, you don't. I do. I can breathe underwater. Nice. He Me can. Too. Me but... too. I, no, see, the problem is I, will, I don't mind telling everyone, but I've also said that we're from the same place, so... <laughs> Fair. So Fair. I don't, I don't want to... <laughs> Out Soko's character. Dude, that is one yeah, of the weird... True. We had so that's many what, dumb that's, coincidences. That weird. In, the so many weird... in the session zero, we realized that Soko's character and Abran... Or Abran. Ethan... Jesus, Abran's character. Hello. <laughs> Ethan's Hello, character. Abran's um, character. Bleeding through. Granted, there's like a, a 100 plus year age difference, but they are from the same... Like, they are originally from the same area. 200 plus year age Which is difference. crazy. So, fucking like a crazy coincidence that none of us really like... At least, like, I don't I don't not, believe any of us... Like, there were really a lot of coincidences. It's not even the same region. He was born in the same uh, settlement as my character's father. Yeah. Uh, it's like, so weird. It's just ridiculous. And he essentially does... A smarter version of what Brooks's father does. Yeah, Brooks is. I'm just better, honestly. Like Jax is just better. built different. Built uh, diff simply built different, guys. <laughs> Brooks's dad is a. Uh, it's a blacksmith. He makes cockles. So... Sorry, what? I had to spoil it. Just had to spoil it by throwing out. <laughs> he makes cock rings. Uh, jokes on you. That's an artificial thing. Um, but I, like, would, I would say that that is more artificial than blacksmith, actually. I would have to agree with that. Especially well, I know who uh, my biggest customer is going to be. Dude, right, enchanted Brooks. cock rings? Thoughts? <laughs> Yo, I want an extra two oh, okay. inches, and I want it I to vibrate like a... I penis enlargement <laughs> pills if you can have a cock ring. Artificers get six shit. attunement slots at some point. So... You could constantly be attuned to a magic cock ring. I'm just saying... Anyway. <laughs> okay, counterpoint. <laughs> no, counterpoint. it's not counterpoint cock rings, please. Let's In session zero, oh, God. Jack's turned down a night True. with a very lovely teacher Which lady. Which I know why. But I, I don't. I had exactly. decent reasons for it. You know? I know one reason, right? But I can't say it because I don't want to spoil it. I mean, 
I'm honestly kind of surprised it didn't come up first session, but I guess we were kind of busy doing other things. Yeah. And we didn't really end up at a tavern, but we will. I'm sure it'll come out in the first couple. I mean, I won't be here session three, but it'll come out in like the first five sessions, I'd imagine. It will come out next session because I have planned a pub crawl. Pub crawl. Hell what yeah. I know? I've got um, the map up and I've planned routes so based on where we're we doing talked, festivities. Okay. We talked this about your character creation. Talked about your session zero. <laughs> what do you think of uh, of session one? With the 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 first, you know, the the fucking campaign two premiere. Which I threw up, uh, almost threw up three times in one day because I was <laughs> breaking it. I was nervous. For those that I like, was nervous. As, okay, a little insight in me as a DM. I have the worst kind of imposter syndrome. I fully believe that I have bullshit my way into the position that I am now, and everything I do sucks. And people are just too nice to to not tell me that it's actually shit you know what i mean oh, I still just, working. you know what i mean it's it's fucking i it's my brain is just like dude you don't deserve what you're doing stop you're bad and there's i mean i don't know it's just the way my brain works so like i get especially it's especially dnd i just fucking i just get nervous every day every time i we were it's sunday but like campaign two launch, dude, that was I had the worst case of imposter syndrome I've had. I was like, bro, what the fuck is happening? I want to die. <laughs> now it's done with, and it went great. Right before we actually like went live, because like you, you know, you how you do your death and thing and everything. Yeah, I was like, let me tell you, I was like, I was like actually kind of freaking out a little bit. I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't like. What if I fuck up my voice when I first do it? Do I have to stick? Like, I was literally just dying, dude. I feel like me and you are doing the most ambitious voices of the group as well. So, like, there's that sort of fear of what if people think I sound like a voices though. Not uh, that hard to pull off. I feel like um, Mara is the best voice. What are you talking about? True. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> um, gaming the system. In that sense of like, we're both doing like a change to going. our general voice and an accent at the same time. Like, there's both a change in, like, pitch or intonation and an accent, which yeah. can be really difficult to pull off at the same time. Uh, so I'm assuming you had, like... Different cadence, which is a little odd. Yeah. I'm assuming you had, like, the same moment of me of, like, oh, God, what if everyone thinks I sound like an idiot? What if people think it's a terrible voice? What if everyone hates it? What if they laugh at me? <laughs> yeah. All, all those things, because I get laughed at on a daily basis by all of these people. So it's, yeah, like, but it's I don't want to add one more thing to that list. You know what I mean? Man. It's affectionate. Yeah, I do enough absolutely. things as is. I don't need to add something else that I wasn't planning to add. You know? <clears throat> no, no, I like I the just... I like both the old man Jacks and I like Irish Brooks. It's fucking great. And I think you guys are both killing it. But um So session one, we'll do a little recap, right? Uh it is the day of a two-day festival on the 14th. Oh, hello! You miss? An alert went off, but I have no idea what the fuck just happened. What? Pog. I didn't see the alert. <laughs> no, I heard the alert, but my, like, activity... Feed. I'm so confused. What is happening? Hi, Duke. Duke hosted? Okay. What the fuck, dude? Oh. It's all Duke's fault, dude. It didn't show up in Duke. the fucking... Okay. Oh, weird. certain hosts, like, if it's, like, under, like, a... It, like the one two viewer host stuff like that doesn't like show anymore okay so everybody's hosting now okay Weird i forgot spot. to turn off the alerts right okay that's my bad Fuck. Nice. <laughs> hi From youtube it's not even in this fucking scene as well but because it's in a different scene like it'll still like the audio is still there all right anyway Wait, really? hey, Luke. That's so um weird. so session one oh yeah the, four, the 14th mode, yeah. of uh Jumez, which is the, the, the our calendars july essentially uh is a um two day um, festival to celebrate the settling of Eldilon in particular. Um, this year would be the 25th anniversary. The city got founded five years into the fourth era. Um, the day started with everyone waking up in their respective taverns. You all traveled to the temple district because you knew that there, that was where the, the city or the, the festival would be officially like started by the Imperial Emissary, um, a woman called Tranliel. Um, started off with a parade, different, like, big carts depicting several deities and whatnot to kind of uh, kick off festivities, and then a speech by Tranliel, who also managed to um, summon 
Empress Stalmar, the same Empress, obviously, from last campaign. Like, she hasn't gone anywhere, and she is a dragon, so she can get old as fuck. So she's still there. She's still chilling. I was kind of hoping she died. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I love her as an NPC. She's great. But I was like, oh, this could be interesting if someone, like, if she, like, died, you know? Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I mean, the fucking Trenly Elves, like, staff has, like, a golden dragon hanging off of it. And she's the Imperial Emissary, so I feel like, you know, that that, that probably tells you enough that Thalmar is definitely still Empress. Um, <laughs> but she had said a few words, and then when Trenly Elves took word again, a crossbow bolt got fired at her uh, and into her chest from a window across the way. And, uh, yeah, there was an attempt at her life, which, uh, after some, some bickering and... and Everyone kind of doing their thing. The party ended up together figuring out that they had to go to check out a well in uh, the trade district behind the uh, Weeping Mug. When in it, some not as gracefully, you know, some people slid on their ass, some people did manage to climb down, you know, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> traveling nice. through a tunnel similar to your session zero, finding another underground, um, finding the second underground sacrificial chamber belonging to Yuan T in the near vicinity of the city, which is a which is a worry, because these were two different temples, all pretty close. Um like how many more could there potentially be? And taking out some some Yuan T brood guards, which are these like reptilian humanoids that are more reptile than human and are just these like big scaly guard dogs essentially. Um, and some just, you know, regular Yuan T, uh, pure bloods and a priest, uh, a priest that almost squeezed the life out of, uh, Daigon, but, um, oh, that was close. Yeah. I forgot what that happened. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but luckily everyone survived the encounter and you then got called, you know, you went back to the temple district, got some money as a reward for dealing with the immediate threats. <laughs> Excuse me. And then... You got the... You, you, Tran Liel went to open the festival regardless because she felt like fear should not rule how they spend their days and should not stop the festival from happening. Um, and then she walked past you and asked you to meet her at her house in the military district uh, the, day after, the morning after the festival ends. So two days from where we are now in the campaign. Which... Um, Tried to find her out of more gold. Promises uh, next, next session to definitely be... You know, uh, festival heavy, you know, two days of doing different games, kind of hanging out, drinking, maybe the party kind of like getting to know each other a little bit better. Um, and then depending on how long you take, you know, uh, are the next step into the investigation to how do how, like how do these want to know exactly where to dig their tunnels to? That is basically the main question on, on, on the mind right now is how do they know how, a couple where to access their city? Too. Because, like, we could do this stuff for Tranley and look at stuff for the city, or we could just go to Sekva. Because I know that mm. uh, uh, Duke yeah. Duke was pushing for that. that and I mean, it Duke, wasn't, wasn't, pushing, like Duke wasn't necessarily pushing for that, but, um, I mean, it, it made it sound I, like a I, didn't, option, I, didn't, I, I didn't mute because I was like, I'm not going to fucking deafen everybody for a no, one sentence. No, I know. But there's, there's definitely a, a yeah, like, Duke's character yeah, will yeah. want to go to Sekva eventually, regardless. Well, not even that. But, it's just like, he, he, I think he just genuinely wanted to travel across the country as well because obviously it's all brand new to us so plus I mean, he's yeah, a like every and every, every duo a has a couple of plot hooks ready to go pretty much but yeah. obviously i wanted to have like one like plot hook or like one story arc to kind of set it set it off set the tone which is this mm -hmm. one and then after that y'all have the complete freedom to dude if you want to spend another few months worth the campaign in the city there is stuff for you to do don't stress you want to fuck off somewhere else? You can do that too. It's up to you guys. <laughs> Yo, we're stealing a ship again, guys. But this time it's no, a pirate ship. I will summon a fucking underwater Tarask if I have to. I don't give a fuck. Do as soon as you dare step, step foot on a ship and leave the continent, you are dead. What if, what if we're just trying to like travel like to a different port? You know? I okay, just want to go to my hometown to make you do an Irish accent. We just want to become you... Viking oh, raiders that steal forward, from so port towns. Focused. Easy. No. <laughs> oh, dude, if you um, like, oh, I'm gonna fucking. I we arrange that Shatter will guess whenever you have like a two week. Like, oh, I can't be there because I have to work. <laughs> nah. Um. So that's that's next session. 
Okay, conspiracy um, theory? Yes. Go. All right. Tranley will arrange the assassination because she sees him, wants to see him as a, like a badass, right? Oh, I fuck it's road in assassination, you know? But really, she's in the one T as cover to push her own agenda to fucking break off from the Empire and become her own sovereign nation. Thoughts? Okay. Conspiracy <laughs> theory number two. Interesting theory. Okay, go ahead. Assassination actually works. She's been replaced by a Yuan T in disguise. Oh, dude, changelings are back in this campaign again? <laughs> they never left. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Uh, I'm not going to confirm nor deny any of these claims, really. We'll right, have to find out. Theory number three. Oh, here we go. Duke and Quiver are both changelings because mm -hmm. they're from the kingdoms and they're fleeing as servants of Orcus. Duke and Koiba are playing and that voice that are playing Koiba heard, twin or the voice sons. that Duke heard was Orcus. Spurs Duke and Koiba are playing four. Gen's twin sons that are both changelings. <laughs> Conspiracy theory number four: Duke and Koiba's characters are boning. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, no conspiracy there. I, 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 just, I did, listen, man. I'd bone, I'd bone Davian, you know. Would you? I don't know, dude. I've only seen about that much of his edgy, face. To say. So. A little too edgy for Jax to think, you know? The mask yeah. stays on. Dude, a little too edgy for Jax. Jax just doesn't. Listen. I'm not going to say anything because that would be good. <laughs> Jax doesn't bone. He I don't want to know because, like, I, I can, I can talk back at Soko, but it will, like, spoil his backstory, and I'm just not going to do that, you know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> prick. Jokes on you. My character yeah, bones everyone because one. he has crippling emotional issues. Okay. Nice. I made my character real, but not that real, all right? Ooh. Um, but... We uh, are getting towards the end of my list of things to talk about. You know, we talked about your character creation. We talked about your session zero a little bit. We talked about um, for next time, chat, watchers, viewers, gamers, homies. Um, if you have any questions regarding the campaign, tweet it out to the Legends Select Twitter. Put it on the subreddit. Uh, if you have any questions in chat, ask them now before we leave. True. Where did the healing spider idea come from? Uh, okay. So, I guess, actually, I probably should talk about that during character creation. I totally forgot I even oh. did that. Um, so, with Jax not really believing that gods ever existed, because, like, it's not that he doesn't believe that gods didn't ever exist, but he thinks that they were just people that people decided were gods, but they don't actually have... They aren't actual gods. They're just people that had power over commoners. You know, kind of that like, uh, uh, oh, like, you know, folklore heroes mm -hmm. sort of vibe, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, if he doesn't believe in that, then he doesn't believe that magic comes from gods. He believes that magic is a science to be manipulated. And with Jax, it's like, okay, I don't really think magic has a place in science, but I will use it to further my own goals mm -hmm. sort of thing. So I was like, okay, I want to make each spell he casts not really a spell, but more of like a tinkered object sort of thing. And if I really need to shoo in some magic s, you know, things to it, I will because I can't think of anything that works without making it magical in some way. So like the spider, I was like, okay, what? How do you? How do you have people heal wounds? You know, you, you can like you can like uh, you know, basic cuts. You let them heal themselves, but like if you have a bigger cut. Gas stitches, right? I was like, okay, thread, thread would be great. What does thread? I was like, oh, spider silk. That's fucking strong as shit, right? So that's kind of like where the healing spider came from. The, the, yeah, I've got a lot of ideas, guys. That's fucking cool. A lot of ideas for all my spells. Can Soko please keep screaming in Jack's voice while staring down into the camera the entire campaign or until Jack dies because it's Soko character? It's the best. Wait, what was I screaming about though? I don't remember. I remember you like screaming in a in a Jack's voice a couple times, but I don't remember the context. I don't know. I was pissed about something. Surprise. <clears throat> Is it how useless you were in combat? I need my question to be addressed. Oh, yeah. Fucking Duke's character started talking shit about what me in yes. combat. Yes. Even wrote oh. in his journal. Oh, yeah. Even wrote fucking, That's I right. like the moving heads or some shit like that, was it? I mean, you were like, just <laughs> I 
gonna and you were gathering, you were gathering Dude, heads. Oh, oh, Dutch, you missed it too. Cause I told Duke, I've killed people for less uh, for, about something you said. I don't remember exactly what it was, and he wanted to inside check me over it. But you were like doing like a story thing, so okay. Duke just kind of like let it slide or whatever. But oh, okay. It's the funniest shit. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah, judging from that, me and Duke's characters are not going to get along this campaign. I, I mean, think you're going to get He's going to be my Kasarin this campaign. All right. Yeah. Maybe not that bad, but like. Yeah. I think love... you will all get along fine. Otherwise, I kind of hope we kill don't, us. Though. If you don't. Well, like, I want the majority of the party to be good. But then I want like little like one v one like rivalries in the in the group because I think yeah, that's but, like fun. there's a difference between like friendly rivalry and you know. I'm glad we come friends first. Not right? friendly. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing. I just love just so time. I'm sure this will get brought up more in their uh, discourse. But mm -hmm. uh, Duke wrote a journal entry, an in-character journal entry. Yes, he did about the, the first session, angel. and. He just went through each character and went through, like, uh, the, essentially, like, his character, like, stayed back a minute and just watched what happened and wanted to see how everyone fought and handled themselves. And he, he posted, Jack's combat prowess is puzzling. His usefulness initially was next to naught. He hung back and offered little in the way of assistance in combat. Someone needs to teach him how to use that crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Yeah, I like because uh, you know, obviously like, your character sketches and you've made some sketches already, and then you have Duke's character who does these like journal entries that he posts on the World Anvil. Which there's a link down under the stream to go check out the World Anvil. There's a bunch of pages there that talks about uh, characters, NPCs, NPCs alike, um, zones, cities, guilds, and whatnot. Um, still, still finishing in, uh, some of the articles up that I've started working on. Check out that stuff. Really cool. It's like a like a, it's it's like a wiki on crack, really. Um, it's check just that better, out. easier organized, honestly. Want to learn anything? And if you go to Duke's characters or Davian's like page, there should be like a little link that takes you to his little journal where you can read his journal entries as they get posted and all that stuff. Really good. Really good. Uh, um. Yeah. Any other questions, chat? Before we uh, sign off also here for this week. Update the world anvil. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I started an in-character sketchbook because Brooks likes to sketch. Yeah, except they're all nudes. Yo, can you show so. a sketch like up to the camera real quick? I can. Uh, they're not all nudes. Just show that uh, one about the, the one that the, like the fucking first one, like the pleasure one. You want to see pleasure, the tiefling? Yeah. Okay, so pleasure is a tiefling NPC. I'm not going to spoil too much, but we will probably meet her next session. Next session, yeah. How do I get this to focus? Probably there. Dude, isn't that sick, dude? <laughs> yeah. See, I didn't cool. know you were actually like a good like drawing artist. I always thought you were I'm... just like a graphics guy. That's I'm why I'd say that. okay. Um, the problem is like it's really difficult. Like the uh, the sketching on these, I've done like very heavy cross hatching, and <clears throat> essentially it's very far outside of my normal style. Because I wanted to, th I, I genuinely sat and thought about it. I was, I was like, okay, what sort of like drawing style would Brooks have? And for him, it's not, he's not drawing to be artistic in a sense. It's like an idol thing. So he tends to draw people that he spends time with. Uh, he might draw places where they spend a lot of time, but it's not, he's not like, oh, this is really pretty. I'm going to yeah, draw this. He spent a lot of time in pleasure. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's one of Brooke's favorite places to be. But actually. legitimately, like it's like an idol thing. He will draw things that, or people that he can visualize um, without thinking about it. So a lot of the sketching is going to be very rough. A lot of the drawing is going to be very rough and jagged. And he's not, uh, he's not a, uh, a finesse individual, is he? No, no. I mean, I mean if the it's only real any, any fucking indicator. Yeah. Now, and so look, hopefully, just like the, the the journal that that Duke is making for uh for Davy, and hopefully we'll be able to get like the, the sketches up on the roller as well at some point uh, on under uh, Brooks's page. Be cool as fuck. Um, but with that got. said, I think this has been Dungeon Discourse for the week. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, this will be up on YouTube uh, on Saturdays every week from now on. Uh, and on Twitch every Thursday. 
Uh, next week, we should have uh, Laura and Belle, in theory, like ask, asterisk, um, because they were the second session zero, be so confirmed. we're going to talk about their stuff, uh, if they can both make that, but we'll uh, announce that uh, this Sunday for definite. Um, so yeah, thanks for hanging. Um, next stream on this channel shall be Sunday for uh, session two, campaign two. Hell yeah. Um, thanks for hanging. Thanks for watching. Really you guys excited. are awesome. Uh, thanks for the input and all that stuff. Uh, Soko, Ethan, thanks for being here. It was a uh, good time talking about your characters and stuff. And we'll be back Sunday for session two. Counting down the days. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. It's wild, dude. Peace out, everybody. Is it Sunday yet? Bye -bye. I want to play D&D. &D. Nope.